Good day my beloved brothers and sisters in Christ, the message you are about to listen to was from God sending to Enoch. Allow me to provide some background on Enoch and why his words should be taken seriously. Enoch is known to receive apocalyptic revelations, and his messages provide insight into the book of Revelation. His local bishop has long given him permission to share and disseminate his sermons to the church. In regards to this message, I found it to be incredibly thorough, and I recommend that every viewer obtain the message's contents to have it documented someplace. It will come in handy in the following days. I also encourage all viewers to forward this message to organizations to help spread the word. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and the Holy Spirit, Amen. The call of Mary to humanity starts, May the peace of my Lord be with all of you, and may my maternal protection always be with you, my children. Little children, two major events that will impact humanity's future are about to occur. The global economy is collapsing, heralding the arrival of the mark of the beast. The split is another event on the horizon that will determine the fate of my son's church. Some cardinals' revolt will split the church, shifting its underpinnings but never toppling them. As a result of global instability, nations' economies will steadily deteriorate. The elite created instability to destabilize the markets and bring in the age of the chip. The murder and death of one of the world's leaders will be the catalyst for the global economy to collapse irreversibly. Humanity will be startled by this occurrence, the globe will be shaken, and the Illuminati elite will seize this foreboding opportunity to force the global economy to collapse and mandate the use of the chip. Many nations will become bankrupt, and the leaders of powerful nations will take advantage of this to conquer and enslave them. The World Bank, which is managed by the elite, will be the first to declare bankruptcy. Everything is set up to convince humanity that the only way out of the current economic crisis is to embrace a new system based on credit points, which will only be issued to those who bear the mark of the beast. While the logistics are being installed and mankind is being tracked, so-called plastic money will be utilized for a while and will be traded via credits or points. Paper money will eventually vanish. The World Bank and the International Monetary Fund will grant loans to countries to help them get out of debt on the condition that their populations be forced to use the microchip. Credits will be issued without interest to help nations' economies recover. The mark of the beast will have an impact on the global economy. Credits and points will be available only to individuals who have the mark of the beast placed on their forehead or right hand. Furthermore, to fulfill the teachings of the Book of Revelation, all men, little and great, wealthy and poor, slave and free, were required to receive a stamped picture on their right hand or forehead. It wouldn't let anybody purchase or sell anything unless they were first marked with the beast's name or the number that represented its name. Those who refuse to take the beast's mark will lose their jobs and property. During my adversary's reign, the new world order that will rule among countries will be in charge of expropriating all of the possessions and resources of those who oppose the government. Those who allow themselves to be tagged will lose their identity, and become part of an authoritarian system, in which the human being will cease to be a person and instead become a number, that will be coded and saved in the archives of a massive computer known as Big Brother. All people who have been tagged will be tracked by satellite, will become entities, and Big Brother will control their fate. Big Brother will be Satan's eye, watching everything, and anyone who attempts to resist or get rid of the microchip will die instantaneously. 
All those designated will develop foul-smelling sores on their bodies, the anger of God will be released against them, and they will have no rest day or night. God's loyal people will be persecuted, and many will die as a result of their faith. Do not be terrified, little children, there is no cause to be concerned if you prepare spiritually and follow our instructions. Know that heaven will not desert you and that I, your mother, will cover you with my robe and make all of my devoted children who are rosary enthusiasts invisible. So put your faith in our two hearts, and everything will work out according to my father's wishes. My rosary will shield you from the forces of evil, as well as spiritual and incarnate demons, who will be powerless to harm you. So, my little ones, brace yourselves for the division in the church and the impending collapse of the global economy. Pray that the church will be strengthened by the power of constant prayer and that the church will be able to survive the coming days of suffering and purification. You, God's people, are the mystical body of the church, with Christ as its head. Support the Pope and my devoted Cardinal so that this bitter cup that my son's church will drink will serve to strengthen her, allowing for the creation of a new church tomorrow, one that is more spiritual and committed to my son's gospel. Your mother Mary the mystic Rose loves you and wishes you the serenity of my Lord. Make my messages known to the entire world. God of justice and peace, love and life, we confess that we are often overcome by the loud and persistent voices of fear and anger. We do not hear the voice of Jesus, which seems but a whisper. Fear trumpets, kill those whom you fear may kill you. The strong shall inherit the earth and the rich shall forever rule the earth. Yet Jesus says, Blessed are the meek for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called children of God. Anger proclaims, those who live by the sword shall not only live but flourish. Might makes right. But Jesus says, put your sword back in its place, for all who draw the sword shall die by the sword. Fear instructs us, forgive no one. Those who wrong you are wrong, by forgiving them, you excuse the wrong and only encourage them. Yet Jesus warns us, if you do not forgive people their sins, your Father will not forgive your sins. Anger declares, hate those who hate you, loving those who hate you only encourages them to take further advantage of you. But Jesus asks, if you love those who love you, what credit is that to you? Even sinners love those who love them. Fear shouts out, show everyone how strong we are so they will be afraid to challenge us. This is the way to prosper. Yet Jesus asks, what does it prosper people to gain the whole world and lose their life? The voices of anger and fear seem so strong, the wisdom is so alluring, the way so sensible and safe. Still, Jesus tells us that there is another way, the way of peace and justice, the way of love and life. When we lack the courage to seek your way, O God, when fear and anger overwhelm our faith, encourage and embolden us. Open us, O God, that we may follow the Prince of Peace. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen.